The Diary of Anne Rodway is a mystery story brought to us by the man who wrote the world's first English detective novel. No, wait, not this guy. No, not this guy either. It's by this guy, Wilkie Collins. Collins' The Moonstone is widely considered to be the world's first detective novel. So the Diary of Anne Rodway. Our story opens with Anne's first diary entry on March 3, 1840. Anne is upset after reading a new letter from her fiancé, Robert. Robert is away in the United States. No, that is probably not the 1840s flag. Anne is upset because Robert is not having any success in the States. And their future really depends upon it. Anne is struggling as a seamstress to make ends meet in his absence. March 4th. Anne tells us about her best friend Mary. Mary is a pretty girl, but has no self-confidence and is very sad about her lot in life. March 5th. Anne is worried about Mary. She has not seen her all day. Mary usually comes to visit Anne at work and later for tea. Just before bed, as they both live in the same rooming house, Anne goes to Mary's room and finds her unconscious on the bed next to a bottle of laudanum. Anne shakes Mary awake frantically. Mary wakens and says that she is fine, but she wants her laudanum back. Anne refuses and disposes of it. March 6th. Mary writes a long letter to Robert, begging him not to be so down and to not leave America to return to England. She's really worried that he's going to do so and jeopardize their future. In fact, as she thinks about it, she's worried that he might already have left to return home. March 7th. Anne is worried about Mary. She had spent the morning with her trying to get some information about Mary's family. Anne thought contact with her family might cheer her up and perhaps they could lend the poor girl some assistance. However, all Mary wanted to talk about was Noah Truscott, the man who had murdered her father. Afterwards, Anne left to go to work, but that evening Mary did not return home. March 8th, 9th, and 10th. No entries. March 11th. Anne is frantic, as after three days Mary is finally brought home by the police. The police were carrying Mary, and she looked dead, though it was only unconscious. Anne noticed the mark of a terrible blow on Mary's temple and sent for the nearest doctor. The police believed Mary was drunk, as they had found her lying in the street, but Anne knew better. Anne looked at the police like he was stupid, but he stuck to his story. The doctor arrived later and confirmed the blow to the head, but thought that perhaps Mary had fallen due to a fit of sorts. As Anne sat with Mary, she noticed a scrap of cloth clutched in the poor girl's hand. It was a piece torn from a cravat. Anne sat with Mary through the night, but Mary passed away before morning. March 12th. Anne is worried about coming up with the money for Mary's funeral, and spends the morning pawning her few things to raise the money. Her landlord notices and says that since she is paying for Mary's funeral, he demands that she pay him what Mary owes him. Anne is shocked and goes to the parish constable and tells him what the landlord said. The constable marches right over and sets the landlord straight, leaving him speechless. March 13th. Mary is laid to rest. Anne is sad beyond words. She misses her friend something terrible and wishes Robert was there to console her. She has changed her mind about him staying in America and wishes that he would come home. March 14th through 18th. Anne does nothing but work and think of Robert. April 30th. Anne is shocked when she discovers the cravat that Mary had torn a piece from before she died. Anne found it by chance, being used as scrap cloth in a candle shop. The candle shop owner tells her where it came from. May 1st. Hot on the trail of the owner of the mystery cravat, Anne's search leads her to a twisted old dwarf. The dwarf tells her that he didn't strike Mary, but he saw who did. The dwarf drives a cab, and the man was a passenger. The dwarf gives Anne the address he dropped the man off at. When Anne returns home, she finds Robert has returned. In Victorian fashion, Robert then takes charge, effectively sidelining Anne. May 3rd. Robert returns to the dwarf and confirms the murderer's address. 
The killer turns out to be Noah Truscott, the man who had ruined Mary's father. In a twist of fate, Truscott is laid up ill due to complications from drinking, much as the police suspected of Mary. Robert and Anne turn Truscott in to the police and give them the evidence they collected. June 19th. It is the date of Truscott's trial. Anne testifies, and as she is leaving the witness box, Truscott lunges at her. Anne panics, but instead of attacking her, he cries, I've been the ruin of the father and the death of the child. Hang me before I can do more harm. June 20th. Truscott is in prison, and the dwarf, who witnessed the crime and did nothing to help poor Mary, has been charged with unrelated crimes and will be joining Truscott in prison. Anne is visited by Mary's brother, who has been trying to get in touch with her for years. He repays Anne the money for Mary's funeral. June 25, 1841. A year later, Anne and Robert are married, and Anne can finally be happy.